In this project, we're going to be building a circuit using the venerable 555 chip, uh, maybe one of the most famous ICs of all time. Um, with this chip, depending on how you wire external components to its pins, it can either behave like a timer where its output pin, pin three, goes high for a certain duration and then goes low. Um, that meaning, meaning there's five volts between the output pin, pin three, and ground. In that configuration called monostable or one-shot mode, we would call that a timer that we'd use for like having something go on for a while, like when you walked up to a piece of sculpture and it turned on for a certain duration. Or it could continually re-trigger itself, which creates a kind of square wave uh, between pin three and ground. And in that mode, we'd sort of think of it as an oscillator. Uh, that's called a stable mode. And uh, depending on, again, how you wire it up, we'll get one of those two modes. In this project, we're wiring it up in a stable mode. So we're going to make an oscillator. So this is the schematic representation and a picture of the circuit we're going to build that I'm putting here at the beginning. So you can flip back and find it if you need to, to refer to this. And then here's a list of the components that we'll need to build this. Actually, you might not, depending on how we build it, we might not need all of these, but why don't you collect them at first so that we can have them on hand as we go ahead and build the circuit. The first thing to do is to identify the pins on the chip. So the handy thing about ICs is that they're always numbered in the same way. And all you have to do is identify pin one and you know what all the other pins are. So pins don't go numbered one, two, three, four, or in different orders like that back and forth. They always start with the upper left hand pin as pin one, and then they go in a counterclockwise direction around the, the chip. So there's usually a little notch at the end as there is on the ones that you have, but sometimes there's a little white dot next to pin one. But once you've identified that, then you know the numbering of all the rest of the pins. So uh, assembling all of the components can be complicated if you're doing it willy-nilly and you might forget something or leave something out. So I think the most reliable way to do this is to do what I call walking around the chip. So you start with pin one and just look at the circuit diagram and then go to pin two and then pin three, etc., walking around the chip. So we see that pin one just connects to ground, so that's pretty straightforward. You just connect a wire between pin one and ground, and now we're done with pin one. Pin two is a little more complicated because it's doing two things. I see that pin two is going through a 0.01 microfarad cap to ground, so I can connect that capacitor between pin two and ground. But the other thing has pin two going to pin six, so I could do that with a wire that goes over the chip from two to get over here to six. But then if I have to pull the chip out or replace it, then it's got this wire over it. So I think it's good to make sure that I uh, bend it so that I can actually go around the chip and connect two and six, but not cover the chip. So that's a, a little trick for getting around from two to six. Now pin three is our output pin. and our signal is going to go between there and ground. And so for now, I'm just going to connect pin three to this place up here on the board higher up just to get it away from the other wiring that I'm doing on the chip. But that's going to be my output, that orange wire. And pin four, we see, just goes to plus. So I'm going to connect the red rail over here to pin four. And now we're done with the left hand side. So the right-hand side, it starts out being kind of tricky because on the schematic, it might not be clear what that's supposed to be doing, but the point is that pin 5 needs to have a variable voltage that's changing our oscillation pitch. So I need to create a voltage divider so I can have a variable voltage on that pin. And we know using a pot, we can make a voltage divider. So I'm going to use this 10K pot. And as you know, making a voltage divider consists of having a plus on one of the outer legs and ground on the other outer leg. And then our voltage division point, we connect to pin five. So that's going to let us create a variable voltage that we can connect to pin five. So this will be, this pot will give us a variable voltage on pin five. 
then what's happening at pin 6? At pin 6 we see that it's actually our, we've already visited it once because that's connected to pin 2. And the other thing that pin 6 does is it connects through a 10k resistor to pin 7, which is right next door. And that is uh, a little tricky how I would connect such a close connection, but one trick you can use is to do this. So it can talk to its neighbor or, talk, or be connected right to the neighboring pin. So now 2 is connected to 7, or I, sh I should say pins 2 and 6 because they're joined together. Those two pins that are connected together are going two places. One is through this cap to ground, and the other is through this 10k fixed resistor to pin 7. Then pin 7 needs to go through a variable resistor to plus. And as a variable resistor, I'm going to use two legs of this pot here, of this 100k pot. So I need to jumper up from pin 7 to one of the legs on that pot. I'm picking the middle, the wiper. And then out of the other leg, directly to plus. So now I've got a variable resistor between pin 7 and plus. And then my last pin is pin 8, which it says is connected directly to plus, to the red rail. So now all that's left to do is for us to hook it up and test it. So we're going to be using this piezo disc as our speaker. And even though they're color coded, it looks like they have polarity and they only work in one direction. It actually doesn't matter. They work either way. But I'm going to put the black wire in the ground and the red wire in this row that's connected to pin 3 or the output from my, from my 555 chip. And if I apply power, sure enough, it's oscillating. And this gives me one frequency, and this lets me adjust a different range that I can tweak with this other one. But I don't know, this is not as fun twiddling these knobs. Maybe twiddling knobs is a cool effect in some ways, but I want to use a different method of my, of changing the voltage for my voltage control oscillator, I want to use a photoresistor. So it looks, it behaves more like a theremin. So to make my voltage divider with a photoresistor, I've hooked up a fixed resistor, a 10K fixed resistor between ground and my voltage division point. And now I'm going to connect a photoresistor between plus and that same uh, voltage division point. And now, I apply power and run it through my speaker. And I can set a range and then I can play it here. Actually, I could set up the other one here with the photoresistor too, and then it would be more theremin y because I would be doing the whole thing setting ranges and things with light and shadow. And I know you might be tempted to take the output here and hook that up to a guitar cable and then adjust the range here so it's a cool drum and bass. But uh, before you do that, you should look at the handout that we have that Fred and I have that shows you how to do that safely so that you don't uh, blow the inputs on a computer or on an amplifier. But it is fun to play.